keyboards in Warning, naughty words inbound. If you don't like swearing, better turn back now. If you do like swearing, I recommend beer and popcorn. Hello and welcome to this review of my pocket type keyboard. This was sent to me by mechboards.co.uk. They ironically also sent me the Hyper 7 keyboard in the same package, which I reviewed a while ago. I measured it, and in terms of footprint, you can fit this thing roughly 14 times into the Hyper 7. But they are opposites in way more things than just size. We'll get to that later. Now, I accepted this thing because I thought it would be a bit of fun, but as it turned out, this was a bit like using a cactus for a dildo, a painful mistake, as using this thing is about as much fun as getting head-fisted up the shitter by a woolly mammoth, but the more I suffer, the more you guys seem to enjoy it, so I guess someone is going to be happy by the end of this video at least. Now the thing is, I know the designer of this keyboard personally, and she's lovely, so on one hand I really don't want to go to town too badly on this thing, but on the other hand, uh, this is one of the foulest pieces of otherworldly dog shit I've ever used. And coming from me, considering what I've already reviewed before, that's really saying something. <laughs> I normally test keyboards for a full week, I barely managed three evenings of a little bit of typing only, and frankly I think even that was a pretty heroic effort, I should get a fucking medal. Gaming is simply out of the question, and really any task beyond writing just a short email or something becomes so laborious that you may as well not even try. I had originally planned to at least write the script for this video on this keyboard, but after just a little bit of usage it was clear that this would have been an absolutely insane mountable undertaking, so I just typed on a normal keyboard instead. I can't even imagine what an ordeal a whole week of using this bricklet of fossilized donkey splooge would have been like. Now, the thing is, most shitty keyboards I review are, in one form or another, manifestations of incompetence, you know, like all those ill-conceived weird ergo keyboards I've shown, or those absurd novelty things like the My First Keyboard, or that namelessly evil projection thing that have no right to exist. They were just bad because they were a product of bad design. They're useless because their developers were cock-juggling fuck monsters who didn't know what in the blue fuck they were doing, and their ideas about what makes a good keyboard were about as coherent as a demented hamster on quaaludes. But this keyboard doesn't feel like it's bad because of incompetence, quite the contrary. It's clearly a joke keyboard, and honestly it feels like it was designed to be shit, and designed very competently in that regard. It comes across as a deliberate attempt to troll people, and by golly has it worked. Now, I could understand and even forgive that if this was just a one-off job made for a laugh. I see stuff like that all the time at meetups, for example. And that's fine, it's funny and interesting, and if I'm honest, it doesn't even look bad. I think it looks pretty slick and cool, even. But this is a commercial product available from multiple suppliers, serious ones, and it costs 35 euros, and even then it doesn't come with a controller, which you need to buy separately, nor is it even assembled, it's a kit keyboard. So in total, this is kind of around the 50 euro mark, not counting shipping, and for me that's where it goes from out of hand joke to preposterous pile of poodle poop. Now, this keyboard is obviously tiny, it's barely bigger than a playing card. To be specific, it's 13.5 by 6 centimeters, or in imperial units, something point whatever tootsies, so it was clearly made for portability. Even for a small keyboard, it's genuinely minuscule though, I think apart from the projection keyboard, and arguably the roly one, it is the smallest keyboard I own. Small enough to fit not just in a bag, like a 60%, but even in a pocket, hence the name of course, which is an extraordinarily rare trait for a keyboard, even among really compact designs. The problem is that while sleek and aesthetically pleasing, at least in my opinion, this keyboard is in no way able to handle a journey, let alone one in a pocket. In fact, one of my friends borrowed it for a day, he rage quit it in less than one afternoon I might add, and even during one journey in a box it had already lost two screws, and those screws still keep falling out. 
And that's not even the worst. I mean, this little plastic thing here, for example, while it looks cool, it's only attached at the top. So I'm sure that as soon as I stick this in my pocket and take 10 steps, it's just going to shear clean off. And I know from experience with other boards that bolted sheet plastic like this just isn't a durable solution at all. I mean, ask my ortho BS keyboard about that one, let alone the little buttons on the keyboard. It's all just not going to last any meaningful length of time. So its main selling point, the portability, is actually completely nullified. But, amazingly, it barely holding itself together is only a minor problem. The biggest problems are the layout and the keys themselves. It's a 40% form factor, as you can see, and it's author linear, so without any staggering in the rows or columns. I guess this makes it easier to produce, but it really doesn't help for user friendliness. And that's kind of the magic term, really, because it feels like user friendliness is the thing that the keyboard was purposely designed to attack. You know, ignoring things like one unit space bars and weird key locations, it comes across as deliberately annoying, like Super Mario frustration or getting over it or amputee. I mean, let's be honest, you can already barely call yourself a multicellular organism if you don't use at least a full size or something like that. But even for an amoeba slash 40% form factor user, this will be an exercise in exasperation. The keys are so close to each other that not only are they not in the positions you expect them to be, but you also can't just put your fingers on the keyboard, whether it be WASD or just the home row, because they simply don't fit. I mean, there's a reason that keys have a standardized footprint, that's just how much space fingers take up in general, but this effigy of excrement just plain tosses that straight out the window. The keycaps, if you can call them that, are unlabeled. I'm sure printed keys would have been somewhat difficult to arrange, but it's really hard to use it with no labels on it. And even if you could touch type on an ortholinear keyboard, the buttons are so small that normal typing field doesn't translate across to this keyboard. So you're essentially having to discover everything from the start, and that's just intolerable. It makes typing even just a few sentences take fucking ages. The friend I mentioned earlier, who isn't a keyboard enthusiast at all, he just innocently wanted to give it a try, couldn't figure out for the life of him how to type any of the number keys, for example, even when I told him about the function layers. I found myself, and my friend happened to get the exact same result, call it convergent evolution, with basically one finger glued to the backspace, which is that one by the way, it's right next to the regular space, and just pecking at keys individually and backspacing until I happened to get the right one. I had to correct so much that I often found myself accidentally even correcting good inputs, because I'd gotten so used to erasing everything that I barely even expected to get a correct key. I assume that the typing demo is going to involve a lot of this as well, and that it's going to be very, very long. And that's not even mentioning the switches themselves. They're little micro switches, very standard ones really, but these switches are not meant for typing, I can tell you that. Like other micro switches, they have virtually no travel, but they're also surprisingly stiff, making for extremely uncomfortable typing. You'd be surprised how quickly you'll tire out from using these little fuckers. It's genuinely one of the worst feeling switches I've ever used in a keyboard, and I don't know what the expected lifetime of them is, but one's already stopped working even. It's this one in the corner, the right arrow key. So I'm guessing it's not very long. All I can say is, what the flying ravioli fuck is this toy ass bullshit? This is so unsuited to use with human hands that the trollness of this seems almost unsurpassed. I can't even imagine what kind of mutated life form it would take to use this thing with even a modicum of speed or convenience. Everything about using this keyboard is so bad that I think I'd rather get gang banged by a dozen drooling syphilitic crack holes than use this keyboard for one day longer. There is no second of me using this thing that doesn't involve me being furious and thinking something along the lines of what in the name of Mary Magdalene's bleeding vagina is this fuck nuggetry? 
Now, if the keyboard would have just read press X for bot fun or something at the top, I kind of would have understood. But the fact that it's a serious commercial product is the thing that baffles me most of all. The only use I can envision for this is as a sort of cruel present to a friend, though it's perhaps kinder to just mail them a letter bomb or anthrax or something instead. You know, quicker and less painful. Jesus fucking Christ on a bendy bus, what a flagitious feast of flamingo feces. Link in the description below. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard. Fuck yeah.